Yes. Today, red side has had a hundred percent win rate. So that's that's something that you know maybe there's something there. Maybe there's some strength today, or maybe we need to just reset the statistics and burden uh, are doomed to lose. We'll find out. Anyway, bands are going for the Akali, the Galio, the Fresh. Very quick stuff. We'll see if that Jinx and that Caitlyn gets banned. Like you're saying, Caitlyn's typically a third ban, and I think it's mostly a red side ban. I think we've only had it blue. Caitlin, I know it's the blue side. It's, it's, it's Caitlyn, mostly red yeah, side. Like, at the highest level, I feel like I'm seeing Caitlyn ban more on blue than I'm seeing it on red. Yeah, uh, but I, I guess mean, it's just not first pickable. It's so yeah, it's no, good. it's it's not. First, it's typically not first pickable. Uh, good teams will punish B1 Caitlyn's. Um, sometimes you don't see the punishes come through. Sometimes you do. It, it just entirely depends. Uh, but Verna right now, really focusing out the, the pool of Syntax, uh, specifically, you know, those two global mids, and they will themselves will actually move into Caitlyn uh, on that red side. I'm not going to let that one get first picked. So could see many of things. However, we spoke about it throughout the day, very uh, intermittently. The center, new buffs, uh, still has the very high soul drop rate, rate for killing creeps. And of course, now that Q has the effectively the gl uh, Glacial Augment slow on it. So uh, yes, definitely it a pick. Yeah, definitely a pick that, you know, we spoke with them about uh, or Demba about last week, and he said, "Yeah, Senna, it's a pick that we think is probably going to be S tier moving forward into into 12-2. Uh, didn't end up picking it today, but Lucent have B1 bit, showing a lot of priority, and Diego Jinx going to be the answers from Verd. See what they're going to look to pick up here in the bot side now. If they're just going to go, well, what support they're going to pick up for this Senna? Probably going to expect to see a jungler. The Zin Zhao is open as well, so we have seen you know band away quite a lot today." Um, and it, has, it was picked up in one game. Unfortunately, a couple of uh, dodgy tower dives didn't particularly give it the greatest game. Um, but it is something we can keep in mind. Yeah, I think Zinzal probably make the most sense. It's definitely like the S. Like this, it's probably considered the strongest jungler on patch, I think. Yeah. Uh, aside Lee uh, and Viego and Jarvan, etc. Uh, but I think Zin probably sits above the rest of them. And I think Verdant and Key is just going for the Viego because they feel like that is what they are the most comfortable on. Uh, and now I'm curious to see what Zimba will lock in. Because I'm expecting this to be probably fasting center uh however we'll have to wait and see because at the end of the day you can kind of farm you can also fast it's kind of up to you what you want to do uh with the center and the bottom lane matchups in general but for now uh, i think this is also a pretty good uh, route to go down for lucent you pick up a very strong uh, 2v2 jungler you might as well pick up something that's very strong in the 2v2 in the mid lane you get the cinder and now ericsson's champion pool uh, you know a player that at least to me in my mind typically is a very passive mid laner has to pick very carefully uh what his matchup will be Looks like we'll get a Renekton lock in for the time being. So uh, expect, you know, two sort of uh, two uh, bands away now uh, on the Verdant end towards Kastruna. Alrighty, well, see what these bands are going to be. Just running it through the Mundo. Going to get banned away here in the top side. Um, I guess he kind of just absorbs whatever Renekton does to him, really. Yeah, so actually thinking about it, Mundo is probably not like terrible. I think the HP trading might suck to be totally honest with you, but you can always kind of ignore the uh, the roof of spread air stuns in most yeah. cases. The, the passive is quite a long cooldown in the early stage, but Kashrulin is also one of the only top lanes, if not the only top lanes, played Mundo so far. Uh, and when he played it, he was damn near unkillable. So I think Verdant maybe just saying, look, if we want it to go to late because we've got this Jinx, we don't want Mundo in the game. Uh, we don't want to have, you know, the infinitely scaling center alongside a, a, a very tanky frontline like Mundo. Uh, and there's also the Urgot uh, as well on top of that. Uh, and with those kind of picks uh, taken out, maybe Kastrudin leans on sort of a, a carry pick, uh, perhaps like the Gwen, if he feels like uh, he can lane that into Valkyrie's Renekton. Of course, however, Ericsson is also a player that can play the Renekton himself. We saw it a lot in days gone by when he was on things like Barrage, so uh, we'll have to see whether or not uh, that is the matchup we'll get, because obviously that can be a very strong 2v2 uh, in the middle lane to try and negate some of that Syndra pressure. So let's pick up now with the Victor ban taken away. Obviously, uh, the Oriana is open, let you hit on. Obviously, um, a couple of mid laners still open if I want to change it up. How did I forget about Corky? He's just been banned all day, so I just, I like, in my head, it's just like he's just not a champion right now. He's they not are champion the with Corky. That. Yeah. And uh, like I said, Ericsson typically wants to le leans on those very passive uh, laners. Corky, no exception to that rule. And of course, once you start to come online, will be very, very powerful. Zeri's not enabled. Don't worry, you can't actually... Well, you, you could then lock her in, but she's not enabled. It's not going to end well for the team if they lock Zeri in. Yeah, if they locked in Zeri, it wouldn't go too well. So, uh, <laughs> Gragas will be locked in here for Kastril. Just going to nullify uh, their Renekton lane. We've seen this one play out hundreds of times now. Uh, and now down to Zimba. I'm very curious. I mean, you could just go something very standard. You used to see things like set, like kind of chuck down here with the center lane. Uh, and I think in a composition where there's actually not too much 
uh, hard engage right now coming out of Verdant. I think Set would maybe be the strongest option, but maybe they just want to go more traditional uh, if they are going to lock in this Leona. Uh, and of course, that will aid uh, in the dive of the Renekton and of oh. the Zin. But Rel, okay, very curious. You don't get to see this one locked in uh, very frequently. Uh, Going to be picked up here. And Rel, a very strong counter engage champion, a very strong engage champion as well. Uh, I do worry about some of the potential follow up uh, if package isn't available for Ericsson in the late stages of the game. But other than that, honestly, uh, I actually quite like this matchup, uh, especially in the early stages. Sen is very vulnerable. If she blows, has to blow a flash on one of these early ganks or something along those lines, Winner should have a very free time finding engages consistently onto that uh, center. Yeah, I'm actually kind of liking what Verdon have put together here. You've got great scaling. Uh, yeah. You've got a nice top early because you've got the Renekton just naturally has a good top lane. Um, Rel going to be fantastic in the team fight. The Magnet Storm is such an effective tool. And, you know, that paired up with the Renekton on the front line, it's going to be quite hard to get onto that back, especially when Jinx starts to get excited. You've got to work your way through the traps. There's the Valkyrie on the Corky. You know, there's lots of ways for them to keep their, but their, their back line is alive. And, you know, Jinx and Corky together with the Zap and the Rockets are going to, you know, add a fair amount of hope that layers in. And, you know, Corky as well mixes up the damage profile pretty heavily, just for the fact that he's AP mostly. Um, but I don't think Lucent have a particularly bad team at all either. You've got the Senna who infinitely scales. You've got the Syndra who just infinitely wave clears and has the ability to one-shot someone. It doesn't matter if you Valkyrie away. If that Unleashed Power has targeted you, it's going to follow you. And you're either going to get chunked or you're going to get killed. So, yeah. you know, I think both teams have actually dropped themselves some pretty nice comps here. And yeah. I think it's going to be down to... Um, I, I, I want to say precision, but that's not the word I'm looking at. Execution. So you're yeah. down to execution from these teams. So let's talk about the execution. I feel like the junglers are going to have to be making some impact early, especially when you've got the likes of the Zin Zhao. Where do you think the attention is going to be? Uh, I think uh, if I'm Lucent, you probably just kind of ignore the top side, right? Gragas should do his thing and very much nullify the pressure that Renekton can put out. If I'm Fantasy, I'm ganking the bottom side or I'm setting up uh, Syntax for a success and I'm trying to uh, bully this Corky, get him off his scaling curve as uncomfortably uh, as possible to ensure that he doesn't turn into a bit of a menace with those late game rockets like you highlighted um, but yeah i think as long as you're trying to shut down these two scaling lanes kashrulan he's shown that he can be a very very competent laner uh, in the opening week uh, so i expect that he and valkyrie will go toe to toe but will certainly do his job and make sure valkyrie doesn't pull ahead too far and i think yeah fantasy towards the bottom side same thing for for keys right if keys wants to keep ericsson and draconium's lanes uh, float and put a lot of pressure into them he can i can also move towards that top side maybe think about diving the gragas just so uh the renekton can be very strong and they can start moving him to lanes uh, in order to use him as a bridge to ensure that ericsson and draconium get to their scaling points absolutely well no early shenanigans to start off our final game of the day both teams are just going to draw that line of scrimmage and defend their buffs make sure nobody comes in in Verdant, you know, they don't really want to risk a coin flip for potentially harder early game than they need it to be. They've got the scaling tools, so they're just going to quite happily hold the line and just play this one a little bit chill to start with. Remember, they are 0-2, so they're going to need to be able to find a little bit more as uh, supports are just going to find each other out. There's a lot of glacial zones down. <laughs> yep. This change to this rune is uh, obnoxious at times. It can be, and I think I'm glad that you touched on sort of the ease of execution very briefly, though you didn't explicitly say it for Verdant's team composition, because it kind of does drive itself uh, towards the later stages. And I think that was definitely a very valid criticism you could have had of Verdant in week uh, one. Specifically, their day, their day one draft was not very easy to execute at all. Uh, albeit, it's definitely a comp you see fairly frequently. You know, LeBlanc Leeson uh, is a duo pretty much as old as the champions themselves. Definitely very prominent in the last couple of years. Uh, more so than not. But yeah, drafting comps like that in the early stages of the league when maybe your team uh, don't have as much experience together. Uh, says you can set you up a failure if you're not on the ball. And they certainly weren't on the ball in week one. Yeah. And I think this kind of draft. Corky, Jinx with an engaged support. You know, stable top lane matchup. Scaling jungle that, you know, can have a lot of impact in the early stages. Doesn't get more by the books than that. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, they are going to shove in fairly heavily here to start with as a winter. Does eat the snare from the center, but will be a okay. So it might be a little bit of an early gank, or at least the threat of the gank. 
from that Viego Shroud. Yeah, Keys throws down his fog to assert dominance on the bottom side of the map. Uh, does give away his position. Probably would have been spied out by fantasy proccing that plant regardless anyway. Yeah, he's definitely saw him. Oh. Both junglers are just bolting towards the top side of the Yeah, road. but the problem is Verdant should have first move and because of the he way the wave is set up for Ericsson, Ericsson can leave. Syntax won't be able to shove in the wave quite as quickly oh. as perhaps they'd want to. That's yeah, smite though, yeah, like you called out. So, crap for crap. Nothing too much to talk about. The only thing is, albeit Keys is actually resetting, Keys is on the side where his Krugs are. Fantasy was not so. Could have picked up that camp and still been ahead of time. Uh, or ahead of uh, on tempo, rather. But both junglers will reset and get equal stat value bases there. So, Sheen for one end, Ruby Crystal and Longsword for the other. I hope that's not going to turn into a phage fantasy. We know. <laughs> we know. We know what they say about junglers that go phage first instead of Iron Spike Whip. What do they say? Uh, they don't do maths. <laughs> See, I'm not one of the people that preaches that whole thing, but it's just mathematically correct. So. No, I do I do think Iron Spike Whip is definitely the better jungle item to start with. There are we clear, lovely. But, uh, obviously, just the, the value that he had when he reset just meant that he could only buy that. So, you know, we're not going to pick on it. He's actually going to potentially pick on Valkyrie, though. Oh, Valkyrie with a slice. No dice. He's out. Burden definitely wanted to play this relaxed. Just quite happy, chilling as uh, Ericsson. It's going to get pretty heavily chunked out here, so it does need to be somewhat careful. They're looking for a potential punish into the bot side as well. Scatter the Week comes down from Syntax, but he hasn't actually got that level 6 available. Just looking for a little bit more damage onto Crest. You can just jump away. Syntax with the Flash available. Not going to even force it as IM Keys doesn't even want to risk it. Burns his Flash to help his mid shove. Just jungle struggles. Jungle struggles. It's one of those things you see a mid laner, you know, struggling in the lane. You're like, all right, I'll go be selfless and help him. And then, yeah. My jungle don't do that. You're in gold. So that, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it makes sense, doesn't it? I'm sorry. That I, was actually drew, I actually drew over jungle man. You'll be very upset to be, hear that. <laughs> I don't know if you're adding me or whoever you jungle with. I've only played two games of you and we lost both of them. Yeah, to be fair, I wasn't playing jungle in those games either. No, you weren't. I was having a damn good time, though. <laughs> that was a fun game. That was a fun game for me, just to watch you tilt. <sighs> I, I enjoy playing in gold. It's, it's a different world, man. It's a different world. But, uh... it is, it's unbelievable. Anyway, back to uh, back to not gold and back to competent players. Uh, Verdant are going to get the second crab spawn. Yeah, they are going to get the second crab spawn. Uh, okay. you... Yeah, no, I'm... Um... <laughs> I'm Wait. entirely struggling right now. <laughs> uh, Lucid did pick up the dragon. Uh, I believe it was actually off screen. So, yeah. Mountain will be the first pick up. Syntax. I'm going to connect on that scatter week, unfortunately. That second ball was not quite in range uh, to find the pushback. And it'll be the ocean on the second dragon. So, Infernal, Cloud, or Hextech. Take your bets. Do you know what we should we should do? Actually, what should we do? Points on, on Twitch. Yeah. Oh, I don't think you can have more than one prediction at a time on Twitch, can you? I think you can I don't know because I like yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna sound like a real boomer in this way. I don't really use you Twitch. Don't use Twitch do you? Uh, you know I don't use Twitch. Yeah. Because what I was gonna say for the for the gamble would be dragon dragon prediction. prediction. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, but I think you can only do one prediction at a time, unfortunately. So hey, freaks, if you're listening, which I hope you are, <laughs> I really hope you're here. Yeah. Make it happen. But how? If they have to do game predictions, Jake, how are they? Oh. Dragon uh, predictions are more important than game predictions. I don't care what anyone else says. You know, as somebody that lost 200,000 channel points the other day <laughs> on Astralis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. that. Yeah, I'm going to second that. Um, thanks, Astralis, by the way. I hope you're here. You probably like, it's like, oh, hold on, actually. Syntax actually going to get loot, rooted down. Scatter the week, though, means that he is a okay down there. Man, Senna having a slow on her queue. It's Call me off guard. Uh, it is yeah. awful. It, 
I mean, here's the thing. I don't think Senna was necessarily struggling, right? But uh, somebody on the balance team must have been playing Senna recently and just felt like they weren't quite strong enough. So. <laughs> Senna. I don't, it's such a crap. Oh! Ooh, good flash. Good flash. I actually think that flash could have been... Saved his life. Yeah. Because that was a scatter into Q. Like, yeah. 100%. 100% death. So, great flash from Ericsson. Uh, getting pressured out. And I think it makes sense. It's just a matchup. Uh, Syndra takes priority, has kill threat. Uh, and I think Ericsson doing the correct thing, respecting the all-in potential, picks up that hex drinker, uh, just because you don't you just don't want to run, run the risk really uh, of dying in the lane. It will slow down the later, uh, you know, the item spikes. But right now, I think the most important thing is surviving the lane, not dying, uh, staying in lane to actually pick up CS. So I want a theory craft with you. Sure. Why aren't we seeing things like first strike Senna? Because she has a lot of range. She could proc that fairly comfortably and fairly frequently. You know, in a lane like this? Yeah, I, I, I see no reason to not run first strike in this lane. Hmm. I mean, the, the, the thing about, like, at least to me, first strike, as uh, Keys will take down this Herald, likely uncontested. The thing about first strike is it's it's kind of secretly a burst rune just because of how it operates. Obviously, you yeah. get the second window where you will deal... A percent of like true damage and that will be returned to you as gold but i feel like senna doesn't and this is gonna sound you know analyst by the way type discussion but she doesn't deal like crazy burst damage if that makes sense in the in the, in the like super late game stages but she also does so <laughs> first strike great analysis mate it's great analysis i know but a lot of the times you know as senna you're doing one of two things you're either only hitting the front line or you do get access to the backliners because of the, you know, rapid fire cannon range, et cetera, et cetera. And you do get like a good pop where it's like auto Q auto, right? And it's it's like 800 damage, give or take, maybe a bit more depending on who you're hitting, right? If it's a squishy, it's going to be more than 800. Then first strike comes into action and that's a lot of gold to like generate. But yeah. I can kind of get wanting like something like fleet in this, in this lane, though again, even like straying away from fleet, grasp, right? Like just, you just stack the HP just to, to do it. Uh, yeah. It's typically been what the like the runes have been. Uh and I just in general, Senna's also another one of those champions that just has like loads of keys that she can use anyway. Um Yeah, and she's another flexible champion. That's kind of been the storyline for us today talking about champs. It's just this flexibility yeah. from some of the champions. Yeah, so you know, I think in terms of like early game, I don't think it's gonna generate too much gold. I think later on though, when you get to those very obnoxious points where it's like rapid fire cannon and you know, 850 plus auto range where you can like auto Q auto and it's a lot of damage and you'll generate the gold off that. That feels nice, but how often are you always going to get to do that over what mm -hmm. maybe, you know, fleet heals you in lane four or uh, gives you the movement speed to get that next auto attack in, you know? Uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting. Maybe we have for you on the interview. I mean, can I, I need to speak to someone who's, you know, smarter than Jamada to get right. their opinion on it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but Okay. I mean, th th those people do exist. I'm not particularly... Uh, I know my stuff, but I, I won't be smart <laughs> then. This isn't a job interview, bro. You don't need to sell yourself to me. <laughs> Winter's getting jumped okay. onto with a great Magnus Storm to pull a couple of members in, and Kez making his way forward. But they got the healing from Fuyu, and that is going to be the end of all of that action. No, yet, yeah, don't worry, it is. Yeah, all right. Uh, action happened. No one died. No one even blew flash. It's a very relaxing end of the day, Jake. We get to podcast a lot here as well. I do. You. Are you sure about that one? Oh. Oh. Draconian, oh. honestly, very <laughs> tempered there, not just to flash forward yeah, and secure I... the kill. Knew that people are about. Yeah. yeah. I actually really respect that. Yeah. That was, uh... yeah, that was uh, like you said, very tempered, very disciplined, I think is the word I would use. Uh, not to be flash in and out. Mid lane Herald, you saw on the vision, Valkyrie is weighing in the wings. Syntax has flash. Well, he's going to get pincered now. I don't think you're going to get the opportunity to flash. Well, oh. he did. He died anyway. First blood picked up for Valerie. Yeah, Valerie. Is that how you say it? Valkyrie? Oh, oh, there's a K in there, isn't there? <laughs> there is. Yeah. But I was thinking of Amy Winehouse. Good song. There's an absolutely fantastic song. Yeah. Great artist as well. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, that flash doesn't bring uh, Syntax out of range of the Cold Meek, so is a dead Syndra and a very successful tower dive in the mid lane, which brings Verdon up almost 2,000 gold. They've given over the first two dragons, but definitely traded it 
uh, I would say sufficiently for now. Uh, things I used to talk about back in season 11, season 12, uh, 10 as well. I think teams that are able to recognize, you know, giving over the first two dragons is not the end of the world. Our comp scales on the bottom side, maybe, or just scales in a way that uh, really makes it difficult for the enemy team to really play the game. As long as we pick up the heralds, get the gold injections into the right members so that we can fight at that third dragon. That's the crucial thing. But I look at, you know, the, the items right now, the inventories of Verdant. I'm not too sure that in two and a half minutes time, they're going to be ready to fight Lucent for a third dragon. Just kind of simply looking at it. Ericsson still needs the Muramana. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, another item on top of that. Jinx is a, a champion that you only really want to fight around once you have two items. Yes, you can fight on Gale Force, but it's not exactly the best. And I think when you're fighting into Xin Zhao, Gragas, uh, Syndra, it's just one of those situations where Draconium probably won't find much success unless he's set up for uh, superbly. I think... Given the game state right now, and given, you know, sort of predictive play, in two minutes' time, Verdant just aren't going to be ready. And that should be a third dragon for Lucent. And that kind of puts Verdant on a bit of a soft timer in terms of that dragon soul. However, I think their comp outscales enough that even if they were to lose soul, as long as they don't lose Baron and then a hefty team fight, they should still be able to navigate their way into, into successful situations. Both the junglers are on this side of the map, and uh, actually there's a reset coming in from Kez. No teleports for Ericsson or Valkyrie. So if they go for this dive, there's no backup, but it looks like Fantasy going to go for the recall themselves. After a couple of, uh... couple of attempts. Oh, there we are. Oh, maybe the pause is because he couldn't reset the fight. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I've watched the pause, final game of the day. It's Why ask for someone smart, Jamada? <laughs> Uh, uh, so yeah, just lag on comms uh, seems to be the reason for the pause. So hopefully we'll get that one sorted out as soon as possible. All right, Jake, I'm going to ask you a very classic UKLC question. Uh, what, are you, what are you having for dinner? I actually don't know what's in the house. Um, oh, okay. I'm absolutely starving, so I need to eat something. I, I mean, depending on the time the show ends, I might be able to go get a takeout. Although you know what, I'm, I've got a bone to pick, and this is uh, this might not be the biggest forum and the biggest crowd to go into, but why the hell did McDonald's stop selling the chicken royale? That's a great question. That was the best burger on the menu, that, man, and I will fight is, anyone. I will, that, that, I will oh, straight up fight anyone who says it wasn't. Hundred percent best chicken burgers on on the on the McD's menu. Hands yeah, out. don't know why they they're, they're making. It. Apparently, my friend told me they're making a muck chicken. Uh, a, yeah, like a, like a no, a muck chicken Big Mac style thing. Like I can't remember what they're calling it. Oh, like a double double chicken fillet, like. Yeah, but it's not with like because the thing about the chicken royale wasn't it wasn't like the fact it was a chicken uh, burger. It had that really nice like bread. It had um the, like had the breaded chicken burger. Yeah. yeah. But this is using like a like two chicken mayos basically, right. which is like not bad, but it's not a chicken royale. No. As well, like the chicken legends. I don't know why they don't do the year. I'm so sad about it. Yeah. I not I might this might be an unreasonable amount of anger I'm feeling about the <laughs> fact that my burger is gone, but man. I live for that burger. That's a, that's that's fair enough. I've I've had too much takeout the last couple of weeks. I've been I've been indulging again, you know. I don't know about you, I go through phases where I delete and reinstall my uh my takeout apps. See in, I live in, in a village in the middle of nowhere, so ah, I only really yeah. get curry delivered. And yeah, as I, much as I like a curry, if I subside off curry, I'm going to have a smelly house. It's probably the best way I can word that. <laughs> we'll be keeping it PG. Ericsson, uh, stepping Ooh. up. Oh, a scap for the weakest solar flare. Can't even drop a package as he goes down. Verdant are just going to have to sacrifice their mid. Yeah, You know it's bad for a Corky when they die without even casting Valkyrie. Let alone the flash. And yeah, loosen. I mean, we said it anyway. I just don't think Verdant one to one, the items, they just, they're just not there, quite frankly. Uh, I will say, Syntax surprisingly not at first item yet. Uh, and maybe now they might even go and contest this Herald. Would be actually no. Look at the mini map, it just seems like. Maybe on five different pages here. For a brief moment, thought that was stolen with a barrel. Would have been funny to be. 
So the answer you cast could be the uh, victim here of a dive into Herald. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, because I mean, this seems relatively free if they want the tower. And I mean, I mean, yeah, look, Winter's here, uh, Draconium's here. Fantasy's read it well, though. Could make it in time. Gragas is a tanky customer. Yeah, he is indeed. They got the teleport as well. The cask is available. No, it's not. So Kez just has to dash away to safety. And that's going to be it for Verdant. Not going to be able to pick up anything else down here. Up here. Absolutely. So, uh, definitely strong attempt. You understand why Verdant would want to go for a play like that. But, uh, yeah, let's just let's watch in awe. Because this is what Ericsson sees from his point of view. Oh. And Ericsson had approximately... 0% chance of making it out alive after the fight. You have to take your hands off the yeah. keyboard and just accept fate. It's just one of those moments. It's like, you know, because I mean, uh, ARF is in rotation. You know when you play against those like full CC bot lanes and you get hit by that first bit of CC? Yeah. And you just know you're dead. Uh, speaking of CC, could be one of those There's situations. CC. Oh, Valkyrie! Casks, ultimate to be able to survive. Oh. Dices, dices away! The belly pops on and there's the scatter to finish the kill. Syntax securing it. You go syntax finds his kill uh, very strong has that ludens in back pocket now uh and this should be most of the tower for lucent they are sending a lot of numbers up here fu is going to catch this wave on the bottom side and that will be that very nice turnaround from lucent i mean three minutes time if we're going back to the same point we made about the third dragon are verdant going to be ready uh for this dragon and Honestly, I feel like if you take a look at Draconium, he's been silently kind of farming up. I'm not sure what his second item is going to be, though. Uh, I'm hoping it's not RFC, but at the same time, I would I would kind of get it. I think at the moment, best second AD item for most situations is probably Phantom Dancer. Uh, I he think he'd be the swords, most. Though. Yeah, he needs long swords. So this is either RFC or Runans, which. That's Runans, because uh, RFC's. Um... Oh, okay. yeah, it goes. Uh, uh, yeah, it's Runans. The... Yeah, yeah, it's Runans. Hmm. I mean, not bad. I think, think... Runins is better over than Rapid Fire right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100% agree. Uh, should be what the item of choice is. And Ericsson, I mean, if you could flick over to the gold, actually, Reed, I would like to see. No, he's not, he shouldn't hit. He's, he's only just next basically, yeah. yeah. He didn't so... have a lost chapter a minute ago. Hmm. It's a tough one to call. There's only enough time for one more recall. And Verdant actually do have the Herald, so they have it. An opportunity to create a bit of a pressure sink to maybe pull Lucent apart on the map and give themselves an opportunity to pick up this dragon. But I mean, they are leaning a lot of members topside. Yeah, I mean, they have the time to do it. You got two minutes, yeah, I guess. Yeah, they have the time to do it. So if they drop the Herald, they can maybe get the tower. I don't think they'll get much more than that, though. But instead, they're just going to move away from it. I think Verdon right now, they just don't really have anything to do within reason. Because Lucent are keeping arms in the mid lane, the side lanes are pretty safe. It just feels like they're not actually going to be able to get a very solid use out of this Herald, given how Lucent are currently putting out their lane assignments. And they do have a window for the top side right now, but they just don't know that. So it seems like just going to be a default. Oh, the mid lane actually is quite low. So maybe they're just going to hold on to it for as long as they can. And I think as long as they can was right now. Yeah, this tower is definitely going to be going down. They'll make sure of that one as Pop goes the tower. Well, minute 10 until the dragon spawns so there is time for one more recall if they want to make it hasty although i don't think we're going to see ericsson finish up that uh mythic yet uh actually hex get used by valkyrie just to get out of the enemy jungle and into their own as a uh, that force of will actually might stop them from being able to recall at all now yeah i think in winner's case and that could be big because that might just be something like you know the full support item completion for winter uh, in this instance, now I'm not going to be able to get that off. And Reed, if we can zoom out and just get a, a look at Verdant Vision here, because, uh, yeah. Oof. This is a rough soul dragon fight. I'm going to have to fully check into Vision, into no Vision, rather. Now, Corky, corky has got the package. That's the only thing which will give Verdant an advantage, but they have to find a solid engage, and the follow up from Ericsson has to be absolutely superb. If they can't get those conditions, they should, in most worlds, lose out on the fight. Draconian wasn't even able to reset to pick up that second item either. 
So I am pretty we much worried. If they can get it, the package. The fight is on already. Ericsson repositions the solar flare. Will clip him as the unleashed power secures the kill onto Winter. Ooh. We have a pause no. in the middle of the fight. Are you kidding me? Oh, Jake. It's a controversial one. That's a controversial one. You don't often see pauses in the middle of the fight. Okay, um, well, that's a reasonable pause. It, so yeah, I've just heard that apparently the Renekton was unable to move. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get them back and sorted that. For that, straight back into the action that, after this. That is, that is a... I mean, here's the thing. We don't have Chrono Shift. Um, no. Chrono Shift is not something we have access to. So whether he could move or not, is kind of irrelevant. It's more about whether or not he can <laughs> actually move after the pause. Um, yeah, because no matter what, they can't test it without continuing the fight. They can't test fight. it without continuing the fight. So I think what's going to end up happening here is the admins are going to just say, reset your game, come back in, and then kind of just pray you, you can move. I think... Yeah, I mean, speaking from, you know, what experience I have, I think that's probably what, what's going to happen here. We're going to come back into oh. the game. Back and into the action, yeah. Ericsson being zoned out. Zimba trying to kill Ericsson. Ericsson able to flash over the wall. And there we have it. Support and jungle are dead for the side oh, of Verdant. Wow. Lucent will secure themselves the Hextech soul. And Verdant. It looked like a good start to the fight, but it just quickly fell apart. Whether or not Valkyrie can move or not, I don't know I, how relevant I, that would have been yeah, for him. I, the Unleashed power completely popped Kez. Yeah. Given where Valkyrie was, I just don't know. I, if he was on a flank and, you know, he teleported and he couldn't move off the wall or something, then, you know, more grounds. I, I assume we'll probably get a replay of that fight. Yeah, so let's, you know, yes, the dive, the initial like, dive is great, but let's keep our eyes on Valkyrie because you can see, yeah, definitely stuck. I mean, at least for a brief moment, but I mean... Could it move? Could it move? Ah, yeah. Oh. Mm, I don't actually know how much more he would have been offered. Yeah, I'm going to be completely real with you here. I, yeah, I think realistically, given where he was in the pathing and such, I just don't think Valkyrie would have made much change for that team fight, given the direction it was going. I know it's it's a tough call to make, right? From from a uh, spectator's point of view, if you're a Verdant supporter, or you're on you know the Verdant coaching staff or, or management or whatever. You are oh, oh. Ericsson. That hex drinker saved his life for about a second. Yeah. And that should probably just be Baron as well. I think the setup is there. Yeah, the uh, the lane states in both top and mid. Kastrulin has uh, of course the teleport as well if he wants to go and join the team. It's a tough situation here for Verdant for Keys to even get to the pit. Bodyguards being played by Kostrud and by Zimba, but there's a teleport on the back line and they don't quite know it's there loose and they could be in trouble from this flank. He's coming in. He's trying to find that opportunity. Kez, can he get over the wall? Heavily chunked out already. Valkyrie jumped onto for moments. You see Baron just under half HP. Verdant trying to get a bit of additional damage off. Winter's been zoned out and Fuyu just continues to fire away. They have to make it happen now or never. They use the Magnus Storm. There's the rocket. It's a little bit too late to secure the Baron. As now it is all on Lucent to get away. Zimba loses his life. Over the wall, Valkyrie goes. Instantly scattered. Oh. Fantasy jumps in. Trying to get a turnaround. The rockets have been laid down and the traps are there. Fantasy slowed by the zap. And Ericsson will secure the kill. They're actually pinned underneath their tower momentarily as the snare goes down. And the recall from the Baron will be quick enough. Verdant can't go for the dive. They don't get Baron, but they do kill two. Yeah, they do get two. They strip it off Fantasy. They get it off Zimba as well. But I mean, they still lose the buff itself. I think Lucent, they're still going to be happy to have escaped with their lives in that buff. Verdant, not able to push any further. That's three and a half minutes until that Elder Dragon spawns up. Now, we'll say Verdant, they do actually find themselves with a gold lead, funnily enough. And I think now is the time where you can start looking at these compositions and saying, yes, Verdant can team fight and they can team fight comfortably. But will this Hextech Dragon for a spanner in the works in terms of how these scalings go, how these consoles interact with one another? It's yet to be seen. And I think we're only really going to get to see it at that Elder Dragon, if anywhere. Lucent, they've done a good job of getting themselves here right now. But Verdant, their scaling members, they're online. Ericsson, you know, if you want to be super cynical, he needs one more item. Right, but I think Luden's Muramana 
Corky's here. Corky's ready to dish out the damage onto the squishy members. And Draconium has those two items and is working towards that Infinity Edge. So I yeah, I think that Infinity Edge is the big thing. Once yeah. that comes in, Draconium actually will be able to really pop off in fights. I mean, we saw it in game number one. The free item Jinx, getting quadra kills, just completely running over the game. It's kind of about stemming the bleeding and waiting out this Baron buff before they can really get involved with too much more here. So they might just have to kind of sacrifice a couple of towers and just catch the waves on their terms. You can see up on the top side, Ericsson is taking a tower for himself. So there is at least a slight response on yeah. the side of Verdant. Yeah, definitely. But again, it's about these next two minutes. What can they get in these next two minutes? Actually, if I can ask Reed, flip over to the gold values because that's what we really need to track. Ericsson oh, wow. on his way to his third item, Draconium, nowhere near that Infinity Edge, still needs uh, about 2,000 gold, give or take. So, uh, quite a while away from that one. And those are the key real, like, I am completions here. I think Syntax as well, for maybe third item, Voice Star, something like that. But right now, Sieging on the bottom side, Baron, Hextech, 30 seconds left on this buff. They can definitely make something of it. Rockets are doing a little bit of poke here from Ericsson with that Ludens. Hasn't got the Hydra fully finished, so you haven't got the AoE procs from them yet. Large wave is pushing up in the top side. I can't really see what the mid wave's doing. I think it will push in to Verdant, but it's not going to be too much of a problem. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a very, yeah, it's gonna it's a fine, very, it's very slow stacking wave. So uh, that's not something that Lucent are going to oh. be able to use for now. Verdant, not going to be able to use that either. What are we owing at? I don't... Uh, what, what? Jake? That was just a lot of damage from the rocket. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was... Uh, that was just a lot of damage from the rocket. I might have got welcome, a little carried away. Welcome to Corky. Yeah, I know. He's not even level 16 yet. And that's actually maybe the closest to a breaking point that we'll get for Verdun. If Ericsson can hit level 16. Uh, because if he can, man, yeah, he's close enough. I mean, if they give him a solo wave, maybe two, I think he can actually hit 16. And that's a pretty big spike in power. Has the tier map. It's not the Ravenous Hydra though. So the rockets aren't splashing the additional damage. It's not getting yeah. any healing. I think the big thing is if Draconium has Infinity Edge for this bait, for this fight, that's going to be huge. I but don't just, think he is going to have it in time. Ericsson open. should hit 16 though and has yeah. that package. Yeah, but the thing is he's picked it up so early. They're only going to have about maybe a 30 second window to actually use it whilst they're sieging here. But it's Verdant that have control of the river, crucially. So this is Lucent checking into not their vision for once. And this could be the only in that Verdant can get Ericsson. There it Look is, the package. He's got the package, he's a little hesitant to do so, instantly blown oh. up, he's out of the fight, Draconian's untouched and he's AoEing his way through, Ooh, look at these health bars, they're oh so low, he throws out the rocket, gonna be able to get excited any moment now, but he can't quite kill the front line, Syntax is still alive, and Kez able to jump away momentarily, Draconian flashed onto, flashes away from the scout of the week, Kez tries to throw a barrel out, and it's a little bit of damage, but there just wasn't that infinity edge, there just wasn't the crit damage from Draconian, and now they're struggling, oh. they're gonna try and catch the wave and stop them from shoving any further as Syntax goes for the scatter. Can't quite connect it. Ericsson up in 20 seconds time. I believe he has the teleport ready yeah, and not. available as well. Kez just too low to do anything though. They may just have to give up the dragon here. Maybe Kez can sustain a little bit off the Gromp. And, but yeah. it's going to be so tight for them to get in in time. Yeah, I think the issue is though, it's it's Lucent that have the, the choke hold control. They can maybe use the gates actually. If they want to get behind the pit, that could give them a bit of a weird advantage, but I don't think they're going to use it. Oh, they're going to brute force in. Right, Lucent don't even hold the choke. Okay, so now it's Verdant in control of this dragon. Lucent. Get engaged on Winter. And the ball coming in. Winter's going low. Winter has to flash out. He's almost picked up. Here's the flag. Here's the solar flare. Draconium's going to fall down as well. Ericsson stunned. Locked in places. That's the it. Omnish power into the scout of the week. Pops him. He has nothing to do and nowhere to go. Syntax will take out the kill. And there is only two on Verdant left. They have been slaughtered at the Baron. At the dragon. All right. I mean, yeah, Lucent, they just get absolutely wiped at the Dragon. They're not covering their backline. And when I say that, it's just a wonderful flank from Lucent and a wonderful pincer, which finds Draconium and it finds Ericsson. Those are the key members they had to look for. They get them. They get them handedly. Baron, because this dance took so long, spawns in 10 seconds time. They can certainly stack those buffs. I mean, you know, Keys can look for a 50-50 here. Over the wall with Heartbreaker, with Smite. It will take a little bit of time because Blue has to come out of the death chamber, but it's going to be oh so risky because if Keys goes down, which inevitably he should do if he goes for this uh, smite fight, I just don't know whether or not Lucent will be able to hold through the death timers. There's enough towers maybe on the map. Without the Baron buff, maybe the siege isn't so great. 
I mean, maybe trying to funnel as much gold into this Jinx. Yeah. That fight would have been so different with Infinity Edge. Yeah, and I mean, oh, I don't know if I, I don't know how much I agree with Ericsson for actually finishing up the more. I, oh, I, I think Ravenous. I think you just need the the Omnivamp. In general, they're not going to contest this Baron at all, so they're going to have the Elder and have the Baron up. Uh, but listen, they need to make use of this Elder because it's already burnt for a minute. I guess oh, 90 seconds left. I, I guess Ericsson's uh, like thought process is. There's a chance where I just don't finish this Hydra in time, but I could finish the more and just getting those I, extra raw stats think, right now could be the difference maker. Maybe, but I'm I'm pretty confident the the combined cost from the components he had is not that far apart from one another. Yeah, I know. Maybe, I agree maybe you your totally. reasoning. Maybe your oh my god, <laughs> maybe I your reasoning is like still the correct, and that's that's actually why he's thought about doing it. But yeah, I mean. Let's see what he can do with that extra more. The extra survivability should mean Tintac shouldn't be able to one-shot him anymore. But I mean, Magi's Shadow Flame definitely wouldn't be too surprised to see it happen. Lucent knocking on the door of Verdant to send Verdant 0-3 moving into their fourth game. Lucent, no one really had them pegged as a team that would maybe be hitting the crowd running as a 3-0 team. They're but they're jumping looking over. now. Fancy's jumping on. Ericsson able to zone himself out. That Infinity Edge not there. Finished up on Draconium. Draconium almost got the gold but it's still lacking in this wave it's just shoving in the elder plus the baron making verdant's life oh so hard tower number one is gonna go down valkyrie trying to jump in forward but they got the route onto winter winter has to jump oh. away to safety he's instantly popped the engage is dead they've got a bit of poke from the super mega death rocket but it's not gonna be enough and there's the scatter from fantasy with the ultimate the solar flare onto kez will do a little bit of work but it's not gonna be enough the nexus will crumble and at 32 minutes, Lucent finds the win. And Verdant goes 0 3. Yeah, Verdant goes 0 3. Lucent go 3 0. I think very strong performance from Lucent start to finish. I think Verdant kind of just sat on their hands a little bit too much in the early game. But at the same time, I just feel like the Lucent draft, the responses, it was just very difficult for Verdant to ever realistically play through any one given lane. Because, you know, playing to top, you're playing Scragus. You have the setup on the bot side, yes. But I felt like Fantasy was always there on the bottom side to, you know, match the pressure as sort of demonstrated by the fact that they picked up the first two early dragons as well. Uh, yeah, I just felt like Verdant weren't able to get much use out of the heralds they picked up. And unfortunately, when it came to those later game team fights, we picked on it a lot. The item completions just were a little bit out of sync. If they had yeah. those completed items, if they had that third uh, item for the for the Jinx, they had the third item for the Corky, when it mattered, maybe they could have pulled through some team fight wins. But unfortunately, Lucent, they built up a big enough dragon lead. It eventually culminated in them just picking up a very early Elder and they snowballed it into the rest of the game. Well, we're going to throw to a very quick break. And when we're back, we're going to actually speak to one of the members of Lucent to break down that game. So don't go anywhere. See you in a second.